Are you aware that 70% of pastors constantly fight depression and burnout for the frustration experienced as a result of ministry workload, discouragement, and pressure? We help leaders grow healthy churches. We are excellent at what we do, and we are fast becoming the best of the very best. MagnaCraft Consulting is set up to help both small and large-sized churches become healthier by using proven diagnostics tools, effective retention strategies. We give the right and appropriate and professional advice. We we are the certified church consultants with the Society of Church Consulting in the United States of America. Trust us to help you grow. Don't wait till it's too late. You will be glad you did. Call us now on 0802-324-2258. Email contact at magnacraftconsulting.com or magnacraftconsulting at gmail.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Magnacraft Limited. Magnacraft Consulting. Doing church God's way. Are you aware that 70% of pastors... Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by MagnaCraft Consulting Team. Anchored by Ni Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host... Me do my day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, apologies for the light and the sound. I'm not in my study uh, room, but I'm just determined to bring something your way today. I promised last week that I was going to do a final uh, wrap-up of the dangers of vanity metrics. Dangers of vanity metrics. My name is Ni Dumade. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Magnicraft Consulting. Magnicraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches grow healthier through empirical assessment, trainings, and strategic blueprint. Okay, and so um, one of the things that we use to help churches grow is empirical assessment. The four things we're going to use: use training, revitalizational effort, um, empirical assessment, and strategic blueprint. Our vision is to be the leading church health consultancy that creates actionable, uh, sustainable, and adaptable solutions. I'm also a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. I'm your host to the weekly Facebook Live broadcast show every Monday of the week. I'm also known as the Church Health Guide of the 21st Century. A big, big, big thank you to every one of you who has been liking our content, sharing our content, and making some good comments, some good feedbacks, telling us how timely are these content are. Um, apologies again if you are just joining uh, for the light and sound. Uh, I'm away from my study um, corner, and of course, I'm trying to make sure that things are as comfortable as much as it. So we're going to wrap up to, uh, on the final episode of 
part four of four, which is the dangers of vanity metrics. The dangers of vanity metrics in your church. Before I go into the juice of today, what is a vanity metrics? Let's do a recap on what a vanity metrics is. A vanity metrics is a measure or an indicator that shows data but does not provide usable interpretation, usable information for making sound judgment, good judgment, right judgment. So metrics is a specific description of an attribute of a product or a service or a result or outcome and you need to make sure that how you measure those metrics matter a lot because if the tools to analyze your data is not well chosen, you might be um, interpreting a wrong data and therefore you're going to be making a wrong decision based on a wrong data. And so the tools and techniques you need to use to process that matrix, whether it is vanity or not, is very important because garbage in is garbage out. If you have garbage into the tools and techniques or the systems of analyzing and interpreting that data, there is a likelihood that garbage is going to come out of the process. And so we're going to go continue, please. If you have missed part one, two, three, I would love you to go watch those videos, those episodes. Part one, two, three is a build up to this one, which is the final of part four. Okay. And um, so we're going to go on number 12. Uh, we, we, when you are trying to look at that metric to know whether it is vanity or not, uh, you have to understand that that data is valid in a context. So you have to provide context for that data. If you strip the context away from the data, you are going to get vanity metrics. You are going to get vanity metrics. Uh, vanity metrics and so take when you want to interpret data make sure that you are providing adequate context to that um, the metrics help your congregation to understand that the context behind the numbers for example we've not been having converts in the last six months you need to put context i mean your group the community uh, that your church is, is growing at an alarming piece growth rate. You need to provide context to your congregation to understand the context behind the metrics that you are taking to be useful. Explain attendance figures to them. Explain attendance trends to them. Explain attendance changes to them. Explain that the, the, the reason behind the fluctuations is due to various factors. Is like is various factors like infrequency of attendance. Don't solely determine the, the, the health by just one metric, but do that in the combination of metrics. So this point is provide context for every data that you want to use for decision making. Number 13, transparent communication. You see, sometimes numbers does not um, explain everything that is going on behind your, your church, but you have to be transparent in your communication. Be open, be transparent, be honest about your church goals, your target, your metrics, and how you are going to measure and track those metrics. You see, one of the things I'll tell you up front is if your metrics is not tracked very well, you are not going to, it will be very dangerous for you to rely on that metrics. If you are just not, if you are not thorough in how you are tracking and measuring your metrics, there is a likelihood that you will not be able to get some usefulness from that, that metric. So communicate why certain metrics are being measured, why they are important to you. You see, what is important to church A might not be important to church B. So tell yourself, communicate to your church, 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 church members, communicate to your church, senior leadership team that certain metrics are there because of these factors and tie them into the overall vision framework and the mission of the church. Tie 
the reason why you are tracking and measuring those metrics to the overall mission of your church. Number 14, encourage personal reflections. Encourage personal reflections. Encourage personal reflections. One of the things I will say quickly with this is encourage members to reflect on their own spiritual growth and engagement because what they value most can be tied onto the metrics of the church that is very important. Provide tools and resources for self-assessment and introspection so that people can begin to value what matters by majoring on what matters. You see, one of the things that kills the church so fast is when you begin to minor on the major and you are majoring on the minor. You see, when you major on the minor, you find out that you begin to place more emphasis on metrics that do not bring greater value on the table for your church and your leadership uh, momentum. Number 15, promote accountability. You see, when you want to ensure that your, your metrics is void of vanity, you have to make sure that there's openness in the system, there's accountability in the system, and by creating an environment, fostering an environment where members hold each other accountable and for their commitment to personal growth, contribution, commitment, and community involvement. So promote accountability. You see, most of these metrics are a function of reporting, a function of update, a function of uh, feedback, a function of surveys and comments. And if you are not promoting accountability, then there's a way, there's no way you're going to be having a metrics that is reliable. 16, diversity measurement. Make sure that you are measuring um, diversity. To measure diversity. To let, let, you know, I told you that church health is a function of a myriad of factors. So if you, if someone, a human being cannot be healthy by just, just the temperature of the body. You need a myriad of factors or indicators or data to be able to deduce that somebody is healthy. So you have to be, you have to diversify your measurement. I mean, if you want to understand the 14 vital signs that your church needs to, um, um, track. I mean, I've done videos on that, you know, guest to attendance, uh, per capita giving, weekly, weekly in cash results, um, convert rate, baptism rate. We diversify your measurement. Use a balanced set of metrics to capture different aspects of your church because your church is going is very dynamic. So use diff, uh, use a very balanced set of metrics that captures the variety, the different aspects of your church impact. This could include metrics related to community service, conversion, mentoring, relationship, discipleship, voluntary efforts. I mean, make sure that you are taking a different aspect of your church impact to be able to track and analyze. Number 17, collaborative decision making. Involve the congregation, the discussions about what metrics to prioritize because you can prioritize a metrics when your church is small, but when your church is mid-sized, there are some metrics that are not really going to give you a good a good um, interpretation. But when your church is large, those metrics are going to be very inf 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 informative. So collaborative decision making by involving your congregation in discussion about what metrics to prioritize and how to measure that success. This can increase ownership, buy-in, and a sense of collective responsibility. Okay, number 18, celebrate milestones. So when, I know I love churches when they have milestones, you have goal settings, and you see when you want to achieve an ultimate goal, it's better you break down the ultimate goal to milestones journey towards that goal. And so, this point is to celebrate milestone. If you're going to get to the ultimate goal, you need to be able to celebrate the low wind, the low hanging fruits until you are able to get the ultimate goal. Celebrate milestone. Acknowledge and celebrate milestone that reflect genuine achievement, progress towards the ultimate uh, goal that you have set out maybe monthly, weekly, yearly, or quarterly, whatever it is. 
whether it is a certain number of a community service or our completed or what convert um, numbers or baptism numbers, whatever it is, make sure that you are able to celebrate the milestone as you hit the status of personal transformation that your metrics is depicting. Number 18, um, offer guidance. Offer guidance in, in terms of to, uh, to be able to, um, I mean, offer guidance and um, subscribe to expert judgment on how to interpret the metrics and avoid common pitfalls to focusing solely on vanity metrics. Help members discover a well-rounded perspective to success. Be faithful enough to look at all these areas to see how you're going to achieve success in a quick time. 20, uh, continuous learning, because the thing is that if you have stopped learning this way, you have already positioned yourself to uh, not to get the uh, to new perspective. Organize workshops, seminars, uh, guests, invite guest speakers to your church to address topics of metrics on meaningful success, promote a culture of ongoing learning and continuous growth. Lead with vision. Your vision is should be should, should be very should be should be casted frequently, continuously remind the congregation of the church over hacking vision and mission. Help them to see how their involvement is very important to the larger purpose of what your church is mandated to do on earth. And so Number 22, seek external input. I meant, I meant that's expert judgment. Seek a consultant. You are having big data. You are having um, some information. You need, um, and um, how will I put it now? You need um, expert judgment. You need a consultant. You need outside perspectives. You need um, uh, outside eyes to be able to, because there are some things you might not be able to see with your own eyes you need somebody who is not used to who is not beclouded about what's going on in your church who is not involved in the politics of your church to be able to give you an expert judgment on that matter seek in counsel seeking guidance from consultants from mentors from outside eyes from other church leaders from experts can help you a great deal from many pitfalls that you might have fallen. Okay, and it can provide you objective perspective on that on that church metrics and strategy. In fact, sometimes when I consult on churches, I'll be able to bring some perspective that nobody in that church will be able to bring that perspective on the table. And so, seek external input as much as you are seeking internal input from your senior leadership team or your congregation. The last one, I'm going to wrap up with this, is practice flexibility. Don't hold on to a metrics forever. I told you in the last episode that some, so in past episode, that some metrics are contextual and they are time bound. Okay? So you can't be um, 2000 in attendance 15 years ago and you are saying that is a relevant metrics is a vanity metrics for today so practice flexibility because if you don't practice flexibility there's a likelihood you're going to hold on to vanity metrics and that vanity metrics will not give you any good decision be willing be willing to adapt be willing to adjust be willing to compromise, be willing to be flexible and refine your approach as you gain better insight from tracking various metrics. Flexibility allows the church to respond to changing needs and circumstances. You see, the thing is that one thing is sure, all of all our churches are churches, but our contexts are different. Our Jerusalem is different. And so we must be very, very careful that as we adapt some of these universal principles, we are adapting and contextualizing them in our setting, in our context or in our um, community. And so I will not wrap up here. I've done so much. We need to ensure we cultivate the culture of authenticity to the metrics that matter in our church. I mean, not all metrics are equal. Not all metrics carry the same weight. And so we need to make sure that the ones that carry enough weight are the ones that we celebrate 
and we hold dear to our heart as we navigate and make the right decision, the best decision, the sound decision for the for to leading and managing managing our church. I want to wrap it up here today. And then next month we're going to come with the pros and cons of artificial intelligence in our church. I mean, how you are in church administration. Uh, what are ways at which you can adopt artificial intelligence in running your church? You can actually run your church with some of these tools to better the impact, to have a better impact in the community. All right, I want to wrap it up here. Thank you for following me so far. And apologies for the lighting. Apologies for the sound. I'm not in my study corner. If these, uh, you have any church-related questions for me, let us have them in any of the social media and as I scroll you on the screen. Be sure you're going to get more than an answer from me. You're going to get a lot of information from me free of charge for just asking a question. Please feel free. You need a help from, from me. I would love to come your way with any answers that will be very... Please go on any of our social media handles on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube channel. Please turn on the notif notification bell so that when we upload a new video, you'll be notified of the content and you don't be missing out on any content we are uploading. Please, this video has been helpful to you. Give us a like, do share us to your community and drop us a comment. I also want to learn from you. I always want to hear from you. I, I, I mean, I want to make sure that you, I mean, I want to know where you are listening and watching me from. And so please drop, a, drop, uh, drop in into the comment section and let me have your feedbacks. I would love to read from you. I'm sure I'm going to respond to you in any of our social media handles. And that would be very, very great for me to do that. Please, we do consultations. We do revitalization. We do trainings. We do strategy planning for churches. Reach out to us. Let's see how we can help your church become what God wants it to be. We provide excellent church consulting for health, vitality, and result. The result will show for it in how we consult for your church. And so, thank you for your attention. Thank you for following through. God bless you as you lead that church to God's glory. Till I come your way next week, Monday, which is going to be next month of October, I say bye-bye. I love you and God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.